Good evening and once again welcome to the NSSF Friends with Benefits show. This is the sixth episode. My name is Gaetano. And my name is Crystal. Now this show, Friends with Benefits, is about success stories that not only inspire and motivate those currently saving, but even those yet to start a social security savings plan with NSSF. The show does emphasize financial literacy. This is valuable information that teaches savers the importance of planning for their savings. Now, if you remember, on the last episode, we met Bonaventure Rachira from Kabale. He used his age benefits to establish a private school, a unique venture in that area. This is true. We also met Ajal James, who also received his age benefits, and he used that to purchase 100 cows and grow orange trees. Now remember that at the end of this episode, we will be announcing the winner from episode five and they will make it to the last eight contestants. They will be that step closer to winning the grand prize of 30 million shillings. Or first runner up prize of 15 million shillings. And the second runner up will go home with 10 million shillings. Mm. But now let's introduce our esteemed panel of judges, starting with Stevens Mwanje, Chief Finance Officer, NSSF. Welcome back. Thank you, Mister. We also do have Mabel Chigundu, who is a human resource specialist. Good to have you back, Mabel. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Gaitan. Good. It's nice to see you again, Paul Busharizi, Public Editor, New Vision. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And last but not least, we do have the lovely Barbara Arimi, Head of Marketing and Communications at NSSF. How are you? Fine, thank you, Gaetano. It's now time for us to meet our 11th contestant from Chanja, Alice Arinaitwe. Let's see what she did when she received her benefits. When I was still working with Aga Khan Primary School, I thought like it's now time to, to do something for myself. And I had to ask for an early retirement because I didn't want to be very old and then when I start, I don't have energy to do something for myself that will sustain me at my old age. I decided to retire. Hello, my name is Arsalina Itemawanda. I received age benefit and this is my NSSF story. When I went to NSSF, they told me to apply. So when I applied and they saw my papers, they saw that I qualify to get my money. I was so excited. After two weeks, I had gotten my money. I received the age benefit. When I got my NSSF benefit, I said, let me try it and put up a school. So I got a little plan. This is my investment, Amka Preschool and Daycare. We started Amka Preschool in 2017. We took this name from the initials of our family name. The first initial sound is my name, Alice. The next one is 602. My daughter, Marcia, and my husband, David Mawanda, my husband. Then Cynthia is for my daughter, and Alicia is for my last born. This is basically a daycare. This is a book. We have 10 children and four teachers. My school has um, a number of, of activities within the school, which include reading, writing, numeracy, and literacy, plus science, which you teach in themes. We also have 
music and we have a teacher, music teacher who always comes in with a guitar and other musical instruments. It's basically it's having fun. I love children. That's why I started this nursery school. They are so sweet. They love you, they hug you, they tell you anything, they tell you stories out of the blue. If you are saving with the NSSF, the organization you're working with can support you, save something little for you, and then you increase on the amount you have saved. I'm going to make sure all my teachers also register with the NSSF so that they can also save for the future. Had I not saved with NSSF, I wouldn't have managed to, to put up this project. So people, let's save for the future. Oh yes, even me. <laughs> I love children. Please help me in welcoming on stage Alice Arinaitwe. <laughs> nice to meet you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. You are quite an amazing lady. You're taking on children, you're teaching them, you're laughing, you're playing. I am the headmaster today, and I'm gonna put you to the test. You have 10 little beautiful children at your nursery. I want you to name all 10. All of them? All 10. Yes, Elizabeth, number one, because she's the oldest. Okay. We have Keith, we have Chloe, we have Aditha, we have Hannah, we have Duku, we have Erina, we have... Um, Arip, mm -hmm. Christian. That's 10 out of 10. Well done. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. Me and my father even forgets my name sometimes. He's like, Gwe, Gwe, Gu, Di Gwe. Let's see, who would like to go first with the question for Alice? Alice, I see your school is 10 pupils. It's one year. It's even in a small space, just a part of your compound. Where do you see uh, your school? or what's your ambition five years, 10 years down the line? Okay, in future, if, uh, of course, numbers will increase. Uh, when they increase, I have to extend to the lower building, which is my home. After all, the girls are getting married and it will remain <laughs> empty. <laughs> so I, I will extend to the other house. It has many rooms uh, because I've seen other people turn homes into schools and I thought it would also work for me. And there is little space in front of the house. So if it's not enough, good enough, there are spaces outside. We, can, we could rent some playground. Uh, the neighbors have, I've already talked to, uh, to him, and he, he's, he's willing to let it go, to be used as a play area. So you don't think you'll, you're not gonna try and go to primary school level, you'll just keep it at preschool? I want to keep it nursery. I'm planning to keep it in nurseries. If you look five, ten years down the line, how many people do you expect? For you to say now, um, I've got it, I'm there. Okay, the structure I have can accommodate, at the moment it can accommodate, each class can accommodate 20, times four that makes it eight, 80. So the other structure, the home, can also accommodate the same number. So if the numbers reach to the maximum, of course the land, the person I've talked to, he's willing to sell. So we can construct another structure, but still remain in the nursery education. Building on to what uh, Stevens asked, uh, the only way you can grow your business is to have more children. I want to find out what you're doing to increase the numbers and what makes you think that you have them, that you have those children increase? There's a group of people who are running around the community with, um, with some interesting jokes and all. There's a lorry, there are, you know, a clown which can attract more children to come. They talk of the flyers. And then we've also done a Facebook advertisement whereby we've We've posted it around the area, the community around us, so that whenever you open Facebook, that school pops out, and you're able to read and see what we, are, we offer, and as well as talking to the community where I live, because I know I, I am from that area. Most of them know me as a professional teacher, a good teacher, by the way, <laughs> and uh, they are willing. I see the eagerness in, in supporting me. 
And there's another follow-up question coming in from Barbara. You're doing very well, Alice, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Alice, what's your curriculum like and what makes your school different from all the other schools that are providing the same service? I feel I stand different from the, from the other schools that offer the same service in that, you know, some people start schools out of the blue. They are not teachers. They start schools just to make money. But me, this is a person who is a professional teacher who knows what I want. So what is your curriculum like? Curriculum is national. Though we have a brand of international, I've been working with an international school. So then the curriculum is, is it, 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 it borrows from the international to the national. So it's enriched. It's enriched. You've heard Alice's story. And if you'd like to vote for her, it's very simple indeed. Dial star 254 hash and then go and look for Friends with Benefits and follow the details there. You can vote for Alice. We'll be right back after this very short break. Is it your kid? Say, Davy. Our gizzy. H.T. Boa. Nalim Zidam Chisawi. Nembula Mogwa with you. Nansobolo Quetu Sako Gala. Nayo lunakulumu Bia nane vikuwa o Singa nateke kero kukade wangi Nandiba dembla mowe ya gaza kati Every year, millions of Ugandans retire into poverty. To reduce that number, NSSF has introduced voluntary membership, which allows more Ugandans to save with NSSF and makes contributing easier by letting you pay through mobile money. It is available to individuals who run companies that employ less than five employees, as well as those who used to save with the fund and are now gainfully self-employed but are below the age of 60. Sign up today by visiting your nearest NSSF branch. NSSF. A better life. <laughs> Welcome back to NSSF Friends with Benefits Season 2. Now remember that at the end of this show, we will announce the winner from last week's episode. But now, let's head down to Ginger to meet the branch representative of NSSF to learn more about the age benefit. The age benefit is a benefit that we offer and it is offered to members who are 55 years of age and they are either employed or not employed. And secondly, people who are 50 years and out of employment can access the age benefit where, okay, the requirement is that you have to be out of employment. It is NSSF Friends with Benefits Season 2. Let's meet our 12th contestant from Mitiana, Joe Semungoma. We head there to find out what he did with his benefits. I've worked with Uganda National Roads Authority where I retired in 2014, October. Welcome to Wujuko. My name is Joe Semungoma. I received my age benefit, and this is my NSSF story. I approached NSSF to find whether I was eligible for getting my benefits. I think I got the money towards the end of 2014. So when I got the money, I had been thinking of what to do upon a retirement. And it is not very easy because you are used to the other life, which does not have very serious risks. In my previous life, I had done some trading from China, and I discovered that things were not so good in the businesses. So now I focused on things that looked more sustainable, and at the same time trying to balance income as much as possible. A kilo of tilapia costs 8,000 shillings from the farm here. I dug this well using NSSF money 
What I discovered was the main problem then was water. But later I thought of a more permanent solution. That's when I started digging that well by hand, which you have seen. Right now it is at a standstill, but my plan is that when I get some money, I should be able to finish it to sustain my all other projects like the poultry and piggery. I used to keep poultry here. I have sold it off mainly because of the water problem that I have currently. Currently I have 16 pigs. When they produce, after three months, I sell off. At this stage, they give us 120,000 for each one. So it is a short-term source of income that you can use for, to keep yourself running and also it is easier than the poultry. I also look after turkeys. Turkeys are easier to manage. We don't have to do a lot of vaccinations and the prices on the market is good. These ones, I'm going to keep them for almost six months. Thereafter, I will sell the old ones and keep the young ones. I went into a longer term income source, and that is forestry. When this idea of the forest came to me, because I was not very sure of the risks involved, I decided that I'm not going to start from scratch. So I decided to, to mix my risks by buying forests that have already been grown and also some land where I can take the initiative to start on my own. We expect within the next two and a half years, we should be ready for harvesting. I also went into finishing off and constructing a few rent houses. These are two structures, each one of them with five units. And each unit is at, at 300,000 per month. This house I built it using NSSF money. I thought I should have a small accommodation for the start. The NSSF money helped me to sustain the family and those that I look after. And uh, if I had never served with NSSF, I would be groping in the darkness. Welcome our next contestant, Joe Semungoma. Hello, welcome. Please have a seat. Um, you have been very busy. I mean, from the video we've seen, you have pigs, you have turkeys, you're into fish at some point, you've built some rentals, then you talked about the forests. I mean, that's quite a lot that you've got going on. So I wanted to ask, in terms of the forest, how much land do you have? Because you mentioned spreading out the risk and buying some forests that were already partly grown. Mm. How much is covered? Yeah, I'm covered uh, for um, already 140 acres of land. 140 acres? Acres of planted land. Okay. Yes. And you have plans to plant more, it seems. Exactly, yes. Okay, all right. Well, I know our judges have so many questions for you, so I'm going to hand you over right now. I think we can start the questions today with you. Paul. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Um, given your experience now over the last three, four years of being spread out, which would you say is your best investment in terms of, uh, of return? And related to that, um, where is the future for, for your investments? Are you going to keep spread out or you're going to narrow down to some one or the other uh, project? Yeah, um, the strategy at the beginning was to look at different portfolios of investments so that I can manage my cash flows over years. Because I realized that forests take many years to mature and sell off, especially if you want to make good money out of them. You should wait for at least five years. So I decided I should put in place some short-term sources of income, but my main business is actually going to be forests after five, the fifth year. That's why even when I was buying forests, I was buying them at different ages, so that uh, when I start harvesting, I should have a, continued, a continuous uh, inflow of income from the forests. So my main business in the long run is going to be forests, and later come back to rentals. Uh, 
Uh, next, Barbara. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you, Crystal. Uh, Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'd like to know if you received your NSSF benefit today, is there anything different that you would do in terms of investing put, the money? I would, if I received my benefits today, yeah. I would put more in the forests. You wouldn't diversify in the others? Not much. Ah, okay. Where I am now, not much really, because I'm almost there. I'm almost harvesting some of the trees. So there would be no need for me to take these other high-risk investments like piggeries and so on. Okay, Joe, you certainly have your hands full. Um, I also wanted to find out how your projects are impacting community. And looking ahead, because you are planning to focus on, on, on the forest, how are you going to impact the community? Already the impact on the community is uh, good because I draw most of the workers from the, the, the communities around. Also, because I don't have a lot of money to clear my land, especially where I want to plant, I give chance to communities to come and plow, plant their food, this short-term food like uh, potatoes, cabbages, most of the vegetables that you get around Busseg actually come from our area. Thank you, Joe. Um, basically, this show is about saving. So uh, I'd like you to, to tell us a little bit about saving. How did it feel like when you were working with UNRWA and the other organizations, I believe, when your money was being deducted from your salary? How did it feel then and how did it feel afterwards when you got the money? The good thing was that I was a finance man. I appreciated what I was getting and being put in NSSF because I knew that I was contributing five. For every five I contributed, I got 15. So I saw that as a good thing for me in the future. All right, thank you for your questions, judges. And Joe, you've said some things that I found interesting. When you started out, you spread your investments all over the place. But then you said after, now from what you know, you would have focused maybe a bit more on the forests. Give us a few tips on a sustainable investment plan. Um, when, I was, uh, when I got this money, what came to my mind was how do I manage my cash flows in terms of the short term, medium term, and the long term. Okay. Yeah. We've learned some new things today. Well, good luck to you, Joe. If you would like to see Joe move forward in the competition, you must vote. You have to vote for him. And you can do that by going to your phone and dialing star 254 hash, then select friends with benefits, and then look for Joe, and then you can vote. Good luck to you again, and we'll be right back after the break. Tired of moving in search of financial assistance? Look no more. Postbank Uganda has all the answers to your financial problems. No more queues. Sign up on Postbank Mobile Phone Banking and dial star 263 hash to pay for bills like water, electricity, URA, passport fees, airtime, etc. You can also make deposits on your account from your phone directly using mobile money services. We have early start accounts for children, school fees loans, group loans, etc. We provide agriculture loans to help farmers purchase seedlings, input, processing, production, and market new agricultural produce. We also have mobile vans that serve our customers in the hard to reach areas. Call toll free 0800-21-7200 or visit any of our branches countrywide. Post Bank is regulated by the Bank of Uganda. Post Bank, empowering you. Oh yes, I am excited, Vanange. This is the NSSF Friends with Benefits show. Another moment that you, I, her, everybody has been waiting for. Time for us to find out who the winner is from last week, who will be going to next week and the week after to win themselves lots of money. <laughs> now, there are two people in this envelope. Actually, there's only one. There were two people last week. And we're going to find out between Ajal and Bonnie Venture who is the winner. 
Okay, are we ready? Remember, the votes have been verified and audited by Price Waterhouse Coopers. So now to reveal the winner from last week's episode. Between Bonaventure and Ajal, <clears throat> lights please, tension mounting, we can feel it. The winner from last week is Ajal James. Congratulations to you, Ajal James. We will see you in the next round. But now it's time to take you back to today's show. We met Alice Arinaitway. She used her age benefits to start an early childhood development center. And we spoke to Joe Semungoma. Now he used his benefits to go into forestry, fishery, piggery to finish his home. And he has been busy. Remember, the person with the most votes from this episode will make it to the final eight. We'd like to thank you, the judges, for giving us a lot of advice and a lot of good questions. Thank you very much indeed. You, the audience, Bandangi Mwebale in your round of applause to yourselves. Really nice, fantastic. And you, the viewer as well at home, for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Now remember to save, 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 save. Save with NSSF. Plan for your benefits. Do not be one of those people who retires into poverty or you squander everything without a plan. Special thanks to Afros and Mo for hair and makeup. The voting lines are now officially open. So we've got to go now. Thank you very much. We'll catch you next week. Bye bye. Remember the news. Sayonara. Bye. <laughs>